Dr. Luke Bynum. I'm the founder and lead instructor of United Dry Needle Education, but I'm also a men's health physical therapist that specializes in treating men with pelvic floor dysfunction, including uh, issues with their prostate, pre and post prostatectomy, and uh, lots of issues with overactive bladder and also incontinence. This video will combine my love for needles and also my love of treating a variety of pelvic floor dysfunctions, specifically dysfunctions related to the urinary system. Percutaneous tibial nerve stimulation is a treatment that we use for a variety of things, including overactive bladder, non-obstructive urinary retention, neurogenic bladder, different types of pediatric voiding dysfunctions, interstitial cystitis and bladder pain syndrome, and also chronic pelvic pain syndrome. And we'll be able to do that with one needle and one electrical stimulation pad. Even though I'm a men's health physical therapist, percutaneous tibial nerve stimulation is a treatment that we use to treat men and women with all of these urinary issues. In fact, women probably are more affected by the urinary issues uh, than the men are. Oftentimes, individuals with female anatomy tend to have a little more issues with urinary incontinence and different types of urinary incontinence, such as stress incontinence and urge incontinence when they have overactive bladder. The reason why they tend to leak a little bit more than individuals with male anatomy is because our anatomy is uh, just actually structurally different. Female anatomy individuals tend to have a short urethra. The urethra is basically the hose that connects our bladder to our opening. It's where our urine comes through when we urinate. When that uh, hose is short, it tends to leak a little bit more. Whereas individuals with male anatomy, our urethra is longer because it goes from our bladder through our prostate if we have one of those, and it goes all the way out our penis. So the length is longer in male anatomy in individuals versus female anatomy individuals, and the longer length gives us more opportunities basically to catch it before it tends to leak out of us. So uh, you're more likely to have a little bit of leaking with overactive bladder if you have female anatomy. This video will show you how you can use just one dry needle and then a TENS unit or an electrical stimulation tower to perform percutaneous tibial nerve stimulation. It'll show you how to set up the TENS unit and the tower for that. And then it'll also show you how to do transcutaneous tibial nerve stimulation, which is simple. And we just use two electrical stimulation pads uh, on the inside of the ankle to perform this uh, tibial nerve stimulation transcutaneously versus percutaneously. It really is remarkable, some of the results that we see with percutaneous tibial nerve stimulation. Uh, and you know, it's a treatment that's so easy to add to your normal physical therapy and your normal pelvic health treatments that it's almost like, why, why not do this? Because it is remarkably effective to address, uh, especially overactive bladder. So again, as a reminder, percutaneous tibial nerve stimulation is used as a treatment for overactive bladder, non-obstructive urinary retention, neurogenic bladder, pediatric voiding dysfunction, interstitial cystitis and bladder pain syndrome, and chronic pelvic pain syndrome. The tibial nerve, which is also known as a posterior tibial nerve in some anatomy text, is a mixed sensory motor nerve containing axons that pass through the L4 to S3 spinal nerve roots. The sacral roots also contain the peripheral nerves involved in the sensory and motor control of the bladder and the pelvic floor. Electrical stimulation of these nerves inhibit bladder activity by stimulating large diameter somatic afferent fibers, which in turn evokes a central inhibition of the micturition reflex pathway in the spinal cord or in the brain. Neuromodulation via the posterior tibial nerve is thought to be secondary to cross-signaling among sympathetic and parasympathetic postganglionic nerve terminals and synapses, which cause an alteration of the nerve signals involved in the voiding reflex. Central inhibition of the micturition reflex pathway makes sense to help for patients with overactive bladder and urinary frequency, but how this helps conditions such as non-obstructive urinary retention and neurogenic bladder is a bit of a mystery. According to the systematic review by these researchers in 2013, percutaneous tibial nerve stimulation was found to be effective in addressing a variety of research variables, including pad use, number of voids, and catheter frequency. For overactive bladder, the success rate was between 37% up to 100%. For non-obstructive urinary retention, the success rate was from 41% to 100%. For chronic pelvic pain syndrome, also known as bladder pain syndrome or painful bladder syndrome, the success rate was 42% to 100%. For pediatric voiding disorders, the success rate was from 43% to 80%. And for individuals with neurogenic bladder, the success rate was 47% to 100%. The FDA cleared percutaneous tibial nerve stimulation for treatment of overactive bladder and the associated symptoms of urinary frequency, urinary urgency, and urinary urge incontinence. Also, 
the National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence states that percutaneous tibial nerve stimulation for overactive bladder demonstrates effectiveness without major safety concerns. You can stimulate the tibial nerve with a needle, or you can stimulate the tibial nerve with electrodes and an e-stem tower, or just simply a TENS unit. The stimulation session lasts for 30 minutes and is performed once a week for 12 weeks. Additionally, monthly maintenance sessions for up to two years are often required. In a study by these researchers in 2005, it discovered that more frequent stimulation, so a frequency of three times per week, produced the same results as stimulation at one time per week. However, it was postulated that the results occurred quicker, so they occurred in four weeks versus 12 weeks, and it seemed the number of sessions was the most important factor and not the time elapsed from the beginning to the end of the stimulation protocol. Even so, one time per week for 12 weeks remains the standard protocol for percutaneous tibial nerve stimulation. For the technique for percutaneous tibial nerve stimulation, with the patient comfortably resting on a table with their leg externally rotated to expose the medial ankle, wrap your fingers around the medial tibia to bracket the tissue posterior to the medial tibia. A 30 millimeter needle is slowly inserted three finger widths above the medial malleolus, which is just the bone on the inside of the ankle, and one finger width posterior to the midline of the tibia. The needle is inserted at a 60 degree angle with the needle tip facing cranially or cephalid. Insert slowly and be aware of nerve sensations reported by the patient. As you can see on the picture, you see a goniometer that's showing you what a 60 degree angle looks like. And again, the tip of the needle is facing towards their head, which is also termed cranial and which is also termed cephalid. This demonstration is intended as a resource for previous students and licensed clinicians who can perform dry needling in their practice action jurisdiction. Please do not attempt dry needling without proper licensure and training. First, we'll mark the medial malleolus, and then we'll mark three fingers above the medial malleolus, and then we'll palpate one finger width posterior to the tibia. Just like with all needle insertions, you'll maintain a clean technique by using gloves and performing an alcohol wipe down. And again, we'll be three fingers above the medial malleolus and one finger posterior to the tibia. We'll insert our needle, and then we will make sure our angle is 60 degrees with the tip facing cranially. We'll insert slowly and just be aware of any nerve sensations reported by the patient. And then we can attach the grounding pad just to the inside of her foot. Now we'll hook up our electrical stimulation machine. The alligator clip will hook to the needle and then the other channel will hook to the electrical stimulation. Using a programmable TENS unit with a continuous waveform, adjust the parameter settings to a frequency of 20 Hz and a phase duration of 200 microseconds. You'll set the treatment time to a duration of 30 minutes. Use an alligator clip adapter to connect to the positive or the red channel lead, then attach the alligator clip to the needle. Place a 2-inch electrical stimulation pad near the arch of the foot beneath the medial malleolus and connect the negative or the black channel lead to that pad. The intensity is determined by the highest level that the patient can tolerate. After setting the machine to the correct parameters, you can begin to turn up the electrical stimulation to the patient's tolerance, and in this video you can see her great toe begin to flex. At the conclusion of the electrical stimulation, you can remove the alligator clip and then remove the needle and place it in a sharps container and remove the pad. There are a ton of different TENS units that you can buy to uh, adapt in order to use for PTNS. One of the easiest ones that you can get is just a simple one off Amazon, which is the TENS 7000. Is if you just do an Amazon search for TENS 7000, you'll see this. This particular model allows you to adjust the uh, frequency and allows you to adjust the phase duration to get to the 20 hertz and the 200 microseconds, which is what you need for the PTNS treatment setup. No matter which type of TENS unit you get, just make sure that you can set the frequency to 20 hertz and you can set the phase duration to 200 microseconds. With any type of TENS unit or with any type of electrical stimulation tower that you have in your clinic, you can actually adapt it to be able to accept alligator clips. You can buy this adapter kit, which is just uh, from Amazon. You can do an Amazon search with the keywords dry needling alligator clips, and this comes as a pack of uh, 12 or 14 basically adapters that you'll plug your traditional electrical stimulation wire into, and that'll turn it into an alligator clip, which you can then use on a needle. So for the treatment setup using a TENS unit, you would use one of those adapters to adapt one of your leads to be able to accommodate the 
needle, and then the other lead you would use as your traditional pad. To set up and adjust your TENS unit, first you'll turn on the TENS unit with the dial at the top of the screen. Then you'll pop that cover open and then change your mode until we get to normal. And then we can hit set and change our uh, phase duration, which is in microseconds. And then you hit set again and then you can change your hertz, which is what I'm doing now. And we'll take that hertz down to 20. And then you're at 200 microseconds with 20 hertz and you'll set your time to 30 minutes. And if you're not using a handheld TENS unit and you're using something like an electrical stimulation tower that a lot of physical therapy clinics have, specifically for the Chattanooga brand tower, you would select a symmetrical biphasic waveform. And for your uh, current, you would select it as a constant current, the CC. Cycle time would be continuous. Frequency, again, would be 20 hertz. Burst frequency, zero beats per second. Frequency modulation at zero hertz. Amplitude modification would be off. Your phase duration is set to 200 microseconds. The time would be 30 minutes, and then the intensity would be determined by the highest level that the patient can tolerate. And then, of course, for a handheld TENS unit, which we already talked about, you may be able to adjust the pulse width, which is a phase duration of 200 microseconds, and then the pulse rate to a frequency of 20 hertz. Just like with the needle electrical stimulation, the intensity is determined by the highest level that the patient can tolerate, and then the session lasts for 30 minutes. As a visual example, using the Chattanooga Tower, you would click electrotherapy and then symmetrical biphasic. You would click edit. Phase duration, we want to change that down to 200 microseconds. For frequency, we want to change that down to 20 hertz. And we would set our time to 30 minutes. All the other parameters that you saw were where we wanted them. To save this protocol, you just hit that file button that you saw my middle finger hit there, and then you can name it. So I just name it PTNS, so you just follow the prompts on the screen to be able to program this and name it as a file. After you have it all entered, then you can hit save. You have it written at the top there, PTNS, I click save. And then to check that, I can go home and then hit the file button again under user protocols and then I see PTNS has been saved. So I have all of those parameters saved on the tower and I don't have to enter them each time. And then to perform electrical stimulation with a transcutaneous approach with pads as opposed to a percutaneous approach with needles, we'll use uh, two electrical stimulation pads. Typically I use the two inch pads. The first pad is attached to the positive or the red channel lead and is placed three finger widths above the medial malleolus and one finger width posterior to the midline of the tibia. The second pad is attached to the negative or the black channel lead and can be placed near the arch of the foot. Just like with the previous setups that we looked at, it's 200 microseconds, 20 hertz for a time period of 30 minutes with the intensity set to the highest level that the patient can tolerate. When I document for PTNS, I like to document informed consent obtained after thorough explanation of risk and benefits, consent form is scanned into the medical record, Pre-procedure timeout performed, which included verification of name, date of birth, and site of treatment. 70% isopropyl alcohol white down performed treatment site. PTNS with one 0 0.30 by 30 millimeter myotech needle, or depending on what brand needle you use. Inserted three finger widths above the medial malleolus and one finger width posterior to the midline of the tibia. You'll also specify whether you're doing the right leg versus the left leg. Needle inserted at a 60 degree angle with the needle tip facing cranial or cephalid. Treatment performed in the supine hook lying position with electrical stimulation at 20 hertz and 200 microseconds with intensity set to the patient's tolerance. At the conclusion of PTNS treatment, the needle was removed intact. Good tolerance to PTNS without adverse events.